welcome to the Productpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole DeLarzac, product development and marketing coach and mom of three. Learn from and get inspired by women entrepreneurs killing it in the product space. Each episode, we will share the latest trends, proven strategies, and inside secrets of the product world, all designed to give you greater confidence to create your own success through a product venture. Let's do this. Welcome to another episode of the Productpreneur Podcast. I'm excited to share this episode with you today. We're going to hear from an amazing woman who started out making her products and is now at select Walmart locations and is expanding like crazy. Before we get into the episode, let's hear a listener review. This is from Kathy FM9. Great learning. I finished listening to all of Nicole's podcasts. Her easygoing demeanor makes her guests feel calm and comfortable. I really like the diversity of guests that she includes, as I've always been able to take something away from each of them. This is a great inside look into each of the entrepreneurs' stories. I have so much more to learn, and I look forward to listening to more. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm so honored that you listen to all episodes. Yes, diversity is something that we cherish here, so thank you so much for appreciating this. Now, if you're listening and you're saying, pick me, I want to be featured, well, what are you waiting for? Leave a review on Apple Podcasts, and I'd be happy to give you a shout out. If you are loving these episodes and you want to hear more discussion on these topics, head on over to my new Facebook group, The Productpreneur Community. We're going to share lots of tips and tricks and you're going to be around like-minded productpreneurs and feel so supported. So go to Facebook and search for The Productpreneur Community and I'd love to see you on the inside. Now for our next guest, I'm delighted to introduce you to Kia James, co-founder and CEO of Tailored Beauty a suite of handmade products to help the entire family achieve their healthy hair goals. In 2010, Kia began her natural hair journey after doing research on healthy hair practices. She wanted to focus on retaining her length, so she used numerous products. She noticed that there were lots of products on the market, but the commercial products would contain lots of artificial ingredients, causing her to question what she was using on her hair. In 2011, Kia began her YouTube channel, where you can still find her today, to showcase her personal natural hair care journey. Everything Butter, Tailored Beauty's signature multi-purpose moisturizer, first debuted there. As Kia's channel and products grew in popularity, Kia began selling Everything Butter to consumers via a popular online site. Together, Kia's husband Aaron and Kia formally launched Tailored Beauty in 2016. Tailored Beauty products can currently be found in select Walmart stores and regional beauty supply stores as more retail chains come on board this year. Now, let's hear from Kia herself. Welcome to the show, Kia. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a bit about your journey to launching Tailored Beauty and how you grew your business to what it is today? So I started Taylor Beauty back in 2015. That's when we became an official established business. Prior to that, I was doing YouTube videos. So I was doing a lot of hair tutorials online before the whole influencer wave, just, you know, really impromptu videos. And from there, I started creating products and showing my audience. And then there was a demand for the products. So since then, we were on Etsy and then we rebranded to a real brand. And that happened around 2016. We rebranded. And since then, we've been online on Amazon. And now we're in Walmart stores. Wow, fantastic. Okay, that's, that's quite a lot there. So let's chat about like, what were you doing before you launched the business? And, and then you started to do hair tutorials. Before I started the business, I was a licensed professional counselor. So I was counseling kids with ADHD, autism. So I have a background in clinical mental health. I also did addiction counseling as well. Prior to actually becoming a counselor, I was in grad school. So I was in grad school and then I started my YouTube channel as a hobby because I felt so overwhelmed with grad school. I needed an outlet. So that's kind of where I was before um, I started my business. Okay, got it. And then you started to make products. I remember reading that you made something called the everything butter and how you were just using that on your YouTube videos and then you put it on your daughter's hair. 
Yes, yeah, so I created a product called Everything Butter because you literally can use it for everything. You can use it for your hair, you can use it for your skin. And so when I started my YouTube channel, I completely took chemicals out of my hair. So I wasn't using any chemicals in my hair. So I was making this butter that would help keep my hair moisturized because with textured hair, we have our hair can get really dry. So I wanted to create something that would keep my hair moisturized, but also the main ingredient, shea butter, were really well on your skin. So I started experimenting on my hair, my skin during my pregnancy, I would rub it on my stomach so I didn't have stretch marks. And then I realized this was a butter that can pretty much be used for everything from head to toe. So you you used it, I believe, on your daughter's hair. Is that correct as well? Yes, I did because I didn't want to use any chemicals in her hair. So I used it in her hair to keep it moisturized. And then from there, I would just develop other products that I could use in her hair because I would read the ingredients and the products that were on the market. And I realized a lot of these are not meant for kids or even for myself. I wanted to make sure nothing in the product was harmful. So I went from creating the butter to a full line of products that could be used for her hair as well as my hair. Wow, cool. So then you started to show it on YouTube. Is that when sort of things started to happen where people started to buy it or you realized that you wanted to make a business out of it? Yes, I started on YouTube. And at that time, This was around 2015. At that time, people weren't really being sold on products on YouTube. YouTube was a place where you would go and you would go for information from start to finish because the information was not readily available how it is now when you're scrolling through Facebook or you're scrolling through Instagram. You had to find the information that you were looking for. So my tutorials had a lot of information in it. I also showed the products that I was using. So I had had a lot of people asking, hey, could you sell that everything butter? And there was a demand for the products because people were actually looking for something like that. Mm, awesome. Okay. And then, so then you got started on Etsy. Yes, I did. And did you find that Etsy was a great platform for you to use in the beginning? Yes, in the beginning, it was a great platform because Etsy is a good platform for handmade products for anybody who's into crafting and things like that. So at that time, it was just a hobby. It was just a marketplace that I could use to bring people from my YouTube audience to Etsy to buy product. So it was great for that phase of my business because I was just really just utilizing it as a hobby at that time. Got it. And so you were making these products and like, did you get the formula right? Like, how did you know how to even make products like these? Trial and error. I've been doing it for so long. I really just would make things if they didn't work, then I would try again. I would um, make products and I would actually just put them in a dark room for six months to a year to see if they would go rancid and wow. just read okay. a lot of blogs, a lot of forums. That's where I've learned a lot of my information from, but really just testing it, testing it for stability, as well as giving it to family and friends to test it because just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. So I wanted to make sure that it would work for everyone. So it took a lot of testing from family and friends as well. Very cool. Yeah. And so you got their feedback and then you knew that you had the right kind of idea there and then you started to sell them. Did you get great feedback at first or what was the kind of the response from your customers? I got feedback that was so good. It was scary because nobody was giving me negative feedback. I wasn't receiving a lot of negative feedback. The only negative feedback that I would receive from either customers or family and friends was the scent. And scent is one of those really tricky things because If it smells good to me, it might not smell good to someone else. And because we have natural products, we we use natural scents. So it really was having a pool of people and testing out scents to make sure that you know, the majority like the set, that was the hardest, that was the most critical feedback that we've got, because you can have someone may like lemongrass, someone may not like the smell of lemongrass, it really all depends on a consumer, but creating a product Mm -hmm. that the majority likes to smell. 
Oh yeah, that's so true. Scent is so important. So are all of your products scented the same? No, they're not. We have two different lines. We have our ultimate collection, which is all the products that you need. And then we have another collection called the Golden Herbal Collection, which is based on medicinal herbs. So that line has more of a earthy scent. So it really depends on what the customer is in the market for. And based on what the customer is in the market for, they may it may be a different set based on the product. Okay. Actually, let's talk about your products for a minute. What is different about your products versus other products out there? And what problems do you solve with your products? Our products are different from other products in the market because of the ingredients that we use. So we use ingredients that's not readily available to the customer, such as go-to cola extract, neem, fenugreek, black seed oil, stuff that you traditionally don't see in hair products, but they've, they've been known to be very beneficial for, for the hair. So you'll if you go on YouTube, you see people doing DIYs with these ingredients, but you don't necessarily see them in products over the market. So we take that DIY process out and our products contain those medicinal herbs, those high quality ingredients and the benefits that you get, such as thicker hair, stronger hair, healthier hair. We're able to manufacture those products, manufacture them and put them into our products. And just making sure that we have products that people can use in every single stage. We call it their hair journey, every single stage of their hair journey. I mean, hair journey means that you want to make a change to your hair. So you may be lacking, your hair may be thin, and you may be on a journey to thicker hair. So we want to make sure we have um, products that can that can do things in every single stage of that journey. Okay, great. And all ages. I think I saw that on your yes. website. Yes, yes, all ages. Okay, so your products could be given to kids, it can be given to an older person, and they're all safe. Is that correct? Yes, our products are safe for all ages. So we recommend using them as young as three months old up into adults. We only have two products that you cannot use on um, kids, and that's our hair vitamins, which is a plant-based hair vitamin. I'm plant-based, so it was important for me to create a plant-based hair vitamin as well as a shampoo bar shampoo bar because it's not tear free we Uh don't recommend that for kids yeah plant-based that is so huge right now and that's amazing that you've caught on to that trend but you probably even were plant-based initially is that correct like would you have started plant-based or did you move towards plant-based I moved towards plant-based so probably when we rebranded I went plant-based, but I've I've always been conscious about making sure that the products that I use were really, anything that I put in my body was the best. So even before being plant-based, I was always an ingredient or label. I read labels, I read ingredients, I do a lot of research, which led me to actually create the products. Okay. And do you see your company growing to beyond hair care? Yes. So one of the things that we're interested in doing is hair tools. So tools that promote healthy hair practices, as well as body, because we only have one body product, which is the everything butter. And we do have a demand and we do have customers who ask for that product. Those are where we're looking at as far as expanding the brand. That makes sense. And is your product still handmade or do you have a producer now? We have a producer, but all of my formulas are made by me. So what happens is, let's say I have a line or I have a product that I'm developing. I work with my chemist and my chemist makes sure that everything remain stable. And stable basically means that if my product is on the shelf for a certain amount of time, usually up to a year, then the products will not expire. So it was important for me to work with the chemist because I I can make products, but I don't have a background in science. And so, you know, when you're talking about mass production, putting something in a dark room for six to 12 months is not going to cut it. So I do have a chemist that helps me make sure my formulas that I create is stable. And then from there, we have a manufacturer who mass produce those formulas. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was going to say if you're in Walmart now, it'd be difficult to hand make everything. Yeah, it would be very (laughs) difficult. It would be very difficult. And okay, let's go back to the YouTube 
part of your launch. How much would you credit your YouTube audience to growing your business? I credit them so much uh, because a lot of the people who follow me on YouTube are like my hardcore diehard fans. They're the ones who's always commenting on Instagram. They're the ones who follow me personally. They they show the most support because with YouTube, you give yourself a piece of that person feels like they know you. You give a piece of yourself to that person. So they feel like they know you. They feel like they're your friend in their head. <laughs> and so it really makes it easy to gain a loyal following when you're transparent about every part of your journey because they feel connected to that. So that's a big part. And, you know, you can do as you can do ads, you can do marketing, but if you don't have the social proof to back that, sometimes it becomes difficult. And so when you have that loyal audience, they are the social proof behind all the marketing that you do. They are the ones that say, hey, I've been using her products since she's been on YouTube and they work really great. So I credit them a lot for the success of the business. That's amazing that well, first of all, that you developed this loyal audience. How big was your audience when you were launching? I think I may have been like less than 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's so it wasn't, well, I don't know if that's big. Because <laughs> <laughs> now you have people who have, you know, they have thousands, hundreds of thousands right. and millions. But I always tell people it's not, the, it's not about the numbers. It's about the engagement and the connection that you have with people. Mm. Yeah. And how many would you have now, would you say? Right now, I think my total following is, my total personal following might be over 50,000. And so right now, I've actually transitioned my YouTube channel. So I'm still doing hair care videos every now and then. But my main focus is on entrepreneurship and really building up entrepreneurs and really teaching them things that they just don't know when they're starting a business. And what advice would you give to people who want to leverage YouTube for visibility? I would say go for it. And there's two ways you can leverage it. I think some people feel like as brand owners, they have to be the face of their brand or they have to be in the forefront of their brand. I would say figure out what you feel most comfortable doing. Do you feel comfortable getting behind a camera? Does getting behind a camera make you feel really anxious? And is it a, a job? If it feels like that, then don't do it. If you want to leverage YouTube, but you don't want to be behind a camera, build up relationships with influencers who can help you do that and make sure you develop campaigns and strategies that are very thorough and that where you can create messaging that's very clear so that they can do the job for you if that's something that you have difficulty doing. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, if you don't want to be the face of your brand, then there are other people who can be the face of your brand. Usually you need to pay them or some, somehow <laughs> compensate them for that. But yes, yeah, there. because I speak to a lot of product business owners and just some of them just don't want to be the face of their brand. And so I always say that, okay, well, find somebody who can be because you just need that relationship, right? To yes. feel like you're a part well, they, of that brand. They need to see what that brand looks like. They need to put some Sometimes they need to put a face, they need to put messaging behind that brand and so that the brand could be relatable to them. So even if they're not the face of that brand, find people who represent what your brand is and utilize those people. Now, going back to when you started to sell, did you find that the products were just flying off the shelves right away or did it kind of take a while to build momentum? Are you talking about retail or online? Oh, just online. When we started online... It was a little slow in the beginning. I think my first year, I did not make that much money. I think I may have made like less than $2,000 my first year. Okay. My second year, when I had more, my views started going up on YouTube. That's when we made our first six figures in that second year. And another thing I did do differently is I would send products to YouTubers. Now, this is, remember, this is 2015. It's not 2021 at this time. So in, okay. around 2015, people weren't 
asking for money or people weren't, you know, there weren't fancy campaigns that were done. It was just people unboxing stuff and talking about the things that they liked. And I would go into their description box, find their address, send it to them. And if they liked it, they would review it. So that really helped. My Etsy page grew, my social proof grew on my Etsy page, meaning that I had more, the more sales I had, the more reviews I had. So the more reviews I had, the more people trusted my product. So that first year, it didn't fly off the shelf. But by the second year, I had everything to back up how well the product worked to um, build me up for success that second year. Mm, Okay, that's cool to hear. So it took you a couple of years to to actually, it's a, that's pretty quick though, to have, mm-hmm. you know, going from say 2000 to all the way to six figures in mm-hmm. a couple of years. So that's amazing. But it's great to hear that. No, it wasn't flying off the shelves immediately. So entrepreneurs know when they start, it's not going to be like, oh, you build it, they will come. It's something that yeah. you have to, you know, get some traction and start to see those repeat buyers and reviews coming. Now you managed to get into retail. So can you tell us a bit about that? How did you get into Walmart with your products? So after that second year, we made our six figures. That's when we were like, okay, this is a real brand. This is a real brand. It's not a hobby anymore. Let's figure out how we can grow this brand. So by that time, we had got a real website. We had got real packaging, but we were still in the process of hand making our products. So we knew we wanted to grow the brand. We really just didn't know the steps to get there. So once we rebranded, we started attending a lot of trade shows. That was the first strategy was to um, attend trade shows and find as many people as we could to learn about our brand. The thing that we didn't know about trade shows when we did our first trade show was there's so there's so many buyers at that show. You have manufacturers looking for companies like myself who are making handmade products to mass produce. You have chemists there. You have buyers from big box stores. You have buyers at independent stores that attend these trade shows. And, you know, that's where I developed all the relationships that I needed to prepare me for big box. So at that time, from 2016 up until 2020, we and we're still online. We grew our online sales and we did this by mass production. We did this through marketing and we did this through influencer marketing as well, as well as making sure that we could mass produce our products. So in that time, I actually pitched to Walmart two times. My first time, the first time I pitched, they said no. (laughs) They said no. And they said that we had a good line, but some of our products just needed some tweaking. So we went back to the drawing board and continued to, we took the advice But we just, we took the advice from a a retailer's perspective and we used that advice to come up with some of our different products that we have on the market. And so from there we pitched again and they said, we love it. We want to have you, you know, in our store, what is your top five selling products? And that's how we got into Walmart. But if I would have did it at that Etsy time, it just wouldn't have worked out. So it really took you know, having a warehouse, having employees, having all of these things to prepare me to actually be ready for retail, as well as getting the cost of my products down. Right. So you had to have some of that infrastructure systems in place before you got into something like Walmart or being able to, you know, fulfill that and manage that. Yes. It is very important to hear for people who are wanting to scale their business and they don't have those things in place yet. So it's it's important not to scale too quickly. Yes, it is. And what advice would you give people who want to get into mass retail? First and foremost, I would say not to make that your number one goal because we live in a time right now where you can make just as much money online. You can make a lot of money online, especially if you're selling through your own website, if you're selling on Amazon, because you don't have to cut your money in so many different ways. You own your customers, meaning that if a customer buys from you one time, you have their email address, you have their phone number, they visited your website, so you can always retarget those people. So I would say focus on building an 
audience, focus on your marketing, focus on all of those things. And then when you've mastered that, then consider going into um, retail because you can be in a situation where you can be broke if you go into retail. If your products don't sell, some stores make you buy that product back at full price. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the marketing place, you don't have the money there, you know, your business is not profitable, it may not be the best way for you to go. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be able to understand those things. You have to be able to understand marketing. You have to be be able to understand margin and things like that to be successful in retail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. Because as you said, if you don't sell through, they can force you to buy back your stuff, which is Mm -hmm. not fun. So you've got to have that proven demand to get into retail and to be able to sustain that. Yeah. Okay. And you've also managed to sell through Amazon. How's that been for you? That's been good. It's been a up and down journey for us. And I say up and down journey because Amazon is an amazing platform. It's an amazing platform for a customer. You can literally just click a button and two days later, it'll show up to your doorstep. So it's been it's it's been good. But from a seller's perspective, what I will say is, is that Amazon requires a lot of training. Whereas when you're running an online store, you're the boss at the end of the day. And so when you're working with Amazon, you have to be prepared for them to call the shots, as well as to learn a different system, learn their platform, learn their algorithm, learn all of those things in order to be successful. So just, you know, really be invested into that because some of the most successful sellers, they know They know Amazon's algorithm the same way social media influencers know Instagram's algorithm. And you really have to stay on top of that. Mm, Okay, that's great to hear. And yeah, they are definitely, they're kind of like your customer at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So you're answering to them for sure. Yes. And what are you most proud of? Because you've had a lot of success. So what, what would you say you're most proud of? Proud of definitely, you know, being able to scale this business to where it is today, because honestly, I never thought from a YouTube channel, it would be to this point, we would be such a big business. And even just seeing like the support of people actually going to Walmart, taking pictures like that, just it still it doesn't feel real. Another thing that I'm proud of is that is our brand ambassador program. It's, it gives me an opportunity to give back to people because I am a counselor, I don't practice anymore, but I'm naturally a helper. Like I love helping people. I love developing people. You know, I love doing that through my YouTube channel, but we do have a brand ambassador program because I've started out on YouTube. I understand how, you know, I understand how to be an influencer and a lot of our marketing is done with influencers. So what we do is we choose about this, this year we have six girls. Last year we had 25, but we take girls each year and it's a full mentorship program that I lead so that they can you know be brand ambassadors and they can leave our program and really make a successful career out of it so you know there's really no reward in it for me because I'm not making any money but it's so rewarding to be able to help people and give back and really uplift women and, you know, give them advice, give them feedback to make sure that they can make a career out of something that they're really passionate about. Oh, I love that. So you help them, you teach them the ways of becoming a brand ambassador, or do you give them sort of like a percentage of whatever they bring in for your business and and sell? So they So they have a, it's a four month program and we have webinars, we have speakers that come in. We learn the basics of being a brand ambassador as far, I mean, not a brand ambassador, it's a brand ambassador program for Taylor Beauty, but they learn how to be influencers. So a brand ambassador is someone who works with the brand and they promote the brand. An influencer is someone who works with multiple brands to get paid to do campaigns. And so in order to get paid to do campaigns, Everything has to have a certain look to it. You have to understand the business behind it. So during those mentorship calls and webinars, we're teaching them how to the how to position themselves in a way that they can be sellable to other brands and make a living off of being influencers. 
Oh, that's so cool. I love that. That's beautiful. And do they typically Thank you. succeed in that? Like how has been the success It's been rate? really, it's been really good. I'm still close with the other brand ambassadors from our last program. And some of them even have successful businesses out of being influencers. So I'm even mentoring them through their businesses, sending them information on, you know, things that I don't qualify for because I'm at a different phase in, in their business. But because I have connections, I'm able to say, hey, I, I don't qualify for that. But but I know someone who's really good for that because her business is positioned really well. So it's been really good. That's amazing. Okay, awesome. I'm sure that there will be people <laughs> clamoring for those roles. And what are you most excited about? What's next for Tailored Beauty? So we hope to expand to other big box stores and we're still learning. We're working on some celebrity endorsements. So getting endorsed by celebrities is really important to us, as well as making sure that we're heavily involved in our community. So right now our focus is also giving back to our community through community service, as well as I'm an HBCU graduate. So making sure that we're really giving back to HBCU. CUs, helping women's groups on campus succeed in any goals that they have and really partnering with them to see if how whatever ways Taylor Beauty can help them with their organizations. Can you explain what is HBCU? HBCU is a historically Black college and university. So yeah, I so I went to a historically Black college and university. So in the U.S., the, the school that I went to was founded in 1882. So okay. at that time, there were no colleges for Black people. So a lot of Black people in the U.S., they go to HBCUs. It's a, it's, that's why they, it's called the Historical Black College and University, because at those times, they were segregated or Black people couldn't get education. Wow. So now they're still present to, today, and a lot of them have great programs, great medical programs, law programs. I went to one that had a great business program. And so sometimes the HBCUs, they don't have as much funding or money as a, a typical university, say, say a school, for instance, like Duke, very well known. So we're able to give back to HBCUs as far as making sure that they have anything that they need in order to be successful. Awesome. That's amazing. I love it. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. <laughs> no problem. All right. And what is one thing you'd love to have help with? I never had a mentor. I've never had a mentor. I, like I said, I'm a helper and I love to give back and I, I see how beneficial it is for other people that I help that I, you know, do YouTube videos for, that I provide services for. And I just never had that. Everything that I've learned, I've had to learn it on my own. And it's it's a good thing because it shows that I'm independent. It shows that I'm willing and eager to learn. But I would like to have someone who is more successful than myself to really be able to call and say, hey, I need help with this because mm. sometimes it can be difficult, but I encourage anyone who's in that phase of starting a business, find a mentor because you can learn so much from somebody who's willing to give their time um, because they see something in you that they right. see in themselves. Right. Oh, that's so true. And to learn from people who've been there. Yes. Done that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And what are your top tips for those people who are listening and want to get started with their own product business? My top tips is to the age that we're in. So I would say what I would say is learn marketing. This is something that I had to do with my own business. I had to really learn how to do marketing because when I started my business, it was all on YouTube. So there was no Facebook marketing. There was no Instagram marketing. Email marketing is, was not as advanced as it is today. Neither was SMS marketing. So I would say learn that because you're 
right now we're in a, a position where you can be so successful because everything in, is in the reach of other people's hands. People are at their phone all day long. So learn how to reach people, learn how to have people understand what differentiates your product or service from anyone else and learn how to speak to those people and you'll be very successful. Mm, great tips. Love it. Yes. Speaking to your audience and the right messaging is super important. And is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything that we haven't covered? No, I am very glad to be here today. I'm <laughs> so excited. I've listened to your podcast. So I thank you so much for allowing me to be on your podcast. Mm. You've interviewed some other amazing entrepreneurs. So it definitely is an honor to be on your podcast today. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to have you because you're incredible and you've built this massive business already. And like, there's, I'm sure there's so many good things to come and you're helping so many people as well. So it's amazing. You. Can you, can you tell everyone how they can find you and your products? Um, you can find me on Instagram. My name is Kia James, K-E-Y-A James. Just search Kia James on Instagram. You can find Taylor Beauty on Instagram, tailored, t- tailored like a tailored suit, tailored beauty, as well as online on our website, tailoredbeautyproducts.com. At Walmart stores, we have a store locator on our website to find a nearest store near you. Not only are we at Walmart, but we're also at other independent retailers as well. And you can also find us on amazon.com. Amazing. Well, we will link to all of those in the show notes. And thank you once again for being on the show. Your story is going to inspire so many people. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Productpreneur Podcast. If you love this episode, we'd be so grateful if you could take a sec to subscribe, share it, and review it on Apple Podcasts. Your review will help more women build their own dream product business. By the way, if you have any feedback, comments, or questions, email me at info at Until next time, keep dreaming up those product ideas.